Hey guys, TapDog here with Little Alchemist Helper, and today I've got two packs to review for you guys. The first is the Scaly pack, and the second is the Wingman pack. Uh, both of these are re-release packs that came out last year. Um, I think they both have some pretty decent cards in them. Um, there is one pack that slightly nudges out the other, but uh, we'll jump into them and uh, have a look. Alright, so like I said, we're going to start with the scaly pack. So this one's all having to do with uh, reptiles and things that have scales on them. And I'm going to kind of talk through all that and explain each one as we go through them. But we'll start with the reptile gold combo card. 17 attack and 16 defense. And it's a combo card. Um, it has 94 total combos, which is below the 100 combo threshold I like to see for combo cards. Um, but let me break that down for you. Um, of those 94 combos, there's one bronze, two silver, uh, 40 gold, and 51 diamonds. So even though it only has 94 combos, the majority of those are the higher end gold and diamond combos. So that is a good thing. Um, when Mr. Andersam did his video on gold combo cards, he gave this a 2 out of 5. And I think I'd actually bump it up a little bit higher than that and give it a 6 out of 10. Um, this is a card that does have some good uses. Um, especially if you have the right combo cards that go with it. Um, so that's why I give it a little bit of a higher ranking. Um, also, I think there might have been a couple additional combos that have been added to it since he made his video. So um, with that being said, that's why I think it is a 6 out of 10. It's not the greatest gold combo card by any means, but it's, it's a little bit better than what his original ranking was. Um, let's continue on. Next we have the only card that really has nothing to do with the scaly theme and that's going to be the onyx combo card and that's sword has 24 attack 20 defense and it is originally a bronze combo card made into the onyx combo card um and because of that it does have quite a few combos it's one of the higher end combo makers for an onyx card it has 102 combos there's five bronze seven silver 53 gold and 37 diamonds so you see the majority are gold combos um if it had been swapped the other way, I might rank this like an 8 out of a 10, but because the um, gold combos are a little bit higher, that means the quality of the combos is a little bit lower. So I'd probably give this a 6, 6.5, somewhere in there out of 10 for this card. It's definitely better than quite a few of the other Onyx combo cards. If you get this, you'll be a happy camper. Um, but it's definitely not the best combo card for the Onyx combo cards. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the combo cards. Both of them pretty pretty good, pretty decent. I'd be happy if I got either of them. Uh, nothing super special to, to run home, tell your far parents about or your family about. But um, it is they're both pretty good cards. But next we'll get into the final form cards and explain each of these and how they relate to the scaly theme. So first we'll start with the Bro Ham. He's got 31 attack, 24 defense. He's a critical strike. And um, it's actually a not too bad critical strike. This one could be useful in your arena. Uh, obviously, you can use it in your heroics as well. Um, and this is a reference to the Hammer Brothers, Broham, uh, from Super Mario Brothers, uh, the series. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played Odyssey. I, I love playing that this past um, October, or whenever it came out, September, October. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And there were some Hammer Brothers in that too. Um, not too many, but but it was fun to, to be able to, to play uh, play against them and with them. Uh, but uh, anyhow, Broham, fun, fun card. Next we have Bubbles! Uh, 24 attack, 30 defense. It is a protection card. And um, as a protection card, I know sometimes I like to add these to my heroics deck. But this one starts with 14 defense, so it's not the greatest card. I probably would not use it. Um, and obviously, reference to Squirtle from Pokemon. I kind of wish, I kind of just a little bit wish, they would have added some sunglasses to him. You know, make him the cool Squirtle from, from the uh, anime, or from, from the TV show. But, um, you know, it's alright. Maybe, maybe that'll be an additional card someday. <laughs> Uh, to go along with the whole Pokemon theme, the next card is Ember with 30 attack, 24 defense, a critical strike card. Um, while Bubbles would not be useful, I couldn't use it in either deck, Ember 
it's probably useful in your heroics, um, not too much in your arena. Maybe if you don't have any critical strikes, he could be useful. But um, as I mentioned, Brohan has one extra attack than he does, so that's two extra points of damage when you critical strike. Um, and obviously, Ember is a reference to Charmander. Now, here's the part I get, I, I laugh at. There's another card in this game called Emberzard. I'll put a picture up on here. He is a gold card, not a diamond card. So um, he's supposed to be referencing Emberzard is referencing Charizard, and Ember is referencing Charmander. And yet, Charmander has the higher attack. Uh, in fact, uh, Emberzard is 2220 um, critical strike, and Ember is a 3024. So. <laughs> Who knows, maybe these two cards should be swapped around. I don't know, I don't care, but I just think that's funny. Um, following that, we have the Dragonkin with 30 attack, 26 defense, crushing blow. Not that great of a card. You might see some use for it if you don't um, fuse it in your heroics just as an extra attacking card. But other than that, I, I don't think you should use it. It's got a low um, attack for a crushing blow. Now this card, has two potential references. Uh, I started playing a game back in 2000, maybe 2001, um, called RuneScape. I'm sure you guys have all heard of it, played it. And uh, it wasn't until like 10 years into the game that they introduced the Dragonkin. But the Dragonkin are kind of a, um, a special class of, of characters in the game that you can play against and fight against. They're, they kind of um, protect against some, some special items in the game. But um, I think it could be referencing them because the, the picture here has a character who has two arms and two legs and it's, it's standing up. Um, whereas the other reference could be the Dragonkin from World of Warcraft. I can't talk. World of Warcraft. Another game I played um, a few years ago. But the Dragonkin in World of Warcraft typically had six... Um, appendages, two, two hands and then four feet on the ground. So because it only has the two, I think this is more referencing RuneScape than, than uh, World of Warcraft. It could also just be talking about Dragonkin in general, that's, that's kind of like a, a race in, in mythical lore. But um, I think it would make more sense to be talking about one of those two, and probably RuneScape. Anywho, continue on. Next we have the Lizard Rider with his 31 attack, 22 defense counter attack. Um, this is it's actually a pretty decent counter-attack card. I could see some use if, again, you're doing a tiebreaker deck um, because it has high attack and a low defense. So you get to use this on, on your final form turn when the other guy uses a critical strike and you're pretty much guaranteed to win. Um, so I, I think it could see some use in that setting. Um, it also could be useful in your heroics deck as just a standalone card. But um, other than that, I don't, I don't think you would use this as a, um, a fused card in your heroics. And I believe this is a reference to the Dewbacks from the special edition of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. I'll put a picture up of the Dewback with the Stormtrooper on it here. I think, I think it could be that. They look similar enough. That's, that's the closest thing I could come up with. Next we have the World Turtle. He has 33 attack, 24 defense, and it's a crushing blow card. Um, pretty decent crushing blow card. I know quite a few people who I play against in the top 20 that use this card. Um, it's not the best crushing blow card. You've got Raging Gamer, and I think there's one other card too that have 34 attack. But um, with that being said, it's still a very decent crushing blow card. Uh, I don't personally use crushing blow cards because oftentimes I'll give you an example. So I'll I'll use my sniper, which has 36 attack, 20 defense, and so when that doubles, it does 72 attack. This um, world turtle only does 33 attack, so um, they get rid of my defense. So they do 33 damage to me, and then I do my 72 attack to him. Now you get rid of that 24. And I end up doing about 15, 14, 15 more damage to him than he does to me um, on the same turn. And oftentimes that's how I win a game or win a hand um, or win a turn, whatever you want to call it. Um, because I'll have maybe an extra 10 health left over afterwards and he'll have negative 5 health afterwards. So that's why I don't use these on the higher end game. But when you're in those middle tiers of Masters rank... Um, I could definitely see a usefulness for using the World Turtle or other Crushing Blow cards. Uh, now the reference here, 
Um, there's a bunch of Hindu and Chinese mythology that talk about a, a world turtle that holds the whole world on its back and it kind of floats in the ocean. But me, being the, the person who looks for the cartoon reference, is totally digging the Aladdin 3 King of Thieves theme. Now, if you guys remember, or if you've never watched it, it's a great movie. I loved it. That's when Aladdin got to meet his father, who happened to be the King of the Thieves. Um, and the two of them searched together with um, Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves to look for the Hand of Midas. It's a, a gold hand that just kind of floated around, and anything it touched turned gold. And so it was in the inside of this traveling turtle that had a giant city on its back. Because this world turtle looks like it has a city on its back, not the entire world. So that's why I think it references the Aladdin uh, movie. But maybe that's just me. <laughs> and then the final card uh, that's in this deck is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtle power. No. Uh, it's Turtle Warrior. He's got 29 attack, 27 defense. He's a critical strike card. Um, unfortunately, he's a horrible critical strike card. I wouldn't use him, i just dust him. And obviously, he's a reference to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Raphael with the uh, the red mask. Uh, I told you guys before, I didn't get to watch this as a kid. It was too violent. Uh, so I was a bummer, but uh, I always wanted to watch it. I did get to play the game in the arcades occasionally, so that was always fun. That was a quarter eater. You could never get past that like second or third level because it was too hard. But uh, anyhow, that's the Reptile Pack. <clears throat> Overall, um, like I've said before, the Gold Combo Card and Onyx Combo Card are both eh, about middle of the range, 6 out of 10s. Um, could be useful in your deck, but uh, it's, it's definitely a deck-dependent card, depending on what deck you have. And then for the Final Form cards, uh, really the, the only two useful ones is Broham for your uh, arena, and then if you're using a, um, a Tiebreaker deck, then the Lizard Rider could be useful there. All the rest of these aren't useful in your uh, arena. Some of them are useful in your heroics. But let's jump over now to the um, sidekick or the wingman pack. <laughs> um, the wingman pack, I think, is a little bit better of the two, and I'll, I'll kind of explain why. Uh, we'll start with the gold combo card. That is sidekick. has 17 attack, 16 defense, and it's a combo card, obviously. Um, when Mr. Anderson made his video about this, he gave it a four and a half out of five stars. And I'd actually agree with him. I think it's a nine out of 10. It's a really great card. It's got 104 combos, so a decent amount of combos. And only two are bronze and three are silver. There's 37 gold and 62 diamond combos. So it's really good high-end combos. Um, I highly recommend focusing on getting this card because it'd be a great addition to your deck. But that's not all, no. To go with this and to go with the sidekick theme, we of course have the Superhero Onyx Combo Card. 23 attack, 22 defense. And um, I think I'd give this a seven, maybe an eight out of 10 um, in terms of combo cards. It's definitely not the absolute best Onyx Combo Card because it's, it's a silver combo card that's been turned into a Onyx. But it does have 107 combos, so one of the highest combo counts in the game and it has zero bronze. It's uh, 16 silver, 42 gold, 49 di uh, diamond combos. So pretty decent combo list. Both of these cards are great. I have the superhero fused in my deck. I love using it. Um, it just, it comes with everything. And most of those combos are high-end combos, really good um, balanced combos. So I, I really can't say enough about it. It's a great card to add to your deck. Um, so both of those combos, high-end, great, can't complain with them. Next, we have our final form cards, and again, I'll kind of go through each of these and explain what their, um, th who the wingman is or who their sidekick is in that sense. So the first one is the kid sidekick. He's got 34 attack, 22 defense, and he's a critical strike card. Um, it's a great critical strike card to add to your arena or your heroics. 34 attack is one of the higher end um, critical strikes, so it's pretty decent there. I'd like to see the defense a little bit higher, but uh, you can't complain. It's still a decent card. Uh, and obviously it's a reference to Robin, who is the sidekick to Batman. So that's where that sidekick combo comes from. Next up, we have the Harry Smuggler. Run, run, run. He's got uh, 31 attack, 26 defense, and he's a crushing blow card. 
Um, obviously, reference to Chewbacca, the sidekick to Han Solo. Um, this crushing blow card could be useful in your heroics, probably not in your arena though. Uh, I like to see the crushing blows be a little bit higher, like um, the World Hurdo that we talked about earlier. So um, definitely um, don't don't dust it, because who who wants to dust Chewbacca? You know, you'll probably lose an arm if you try doing that. But um, I, I do enjoy this card. I wish it had a little bit more use so I could see it more often. Um, next up, we have the Jester Sidekick. Uh, I'm not going to try to do a Harley Quinn imp voice impersonation. Sorry, guys. But Jester Sidekick has 33 attack, 22 defense, and a crushing blow. Slightly better than the Harry Smuggler in terms of crushing blow, since it has two extra attack, but it does have four less defense. Um, I would probably use this in my heroics maybe in the arena if you really needed uh, an extra crushing blow card but because of that low defense i probably wouldn't use it and obviously reference to harley quinn the sidekick to joker um and she's got that beautiful accent that she does but i'm not gonna do it nope <laughs> next up is the barrel gorilla jr 31 attack 23 defense counter attack um very similar to the Lizard Rider that we mentioned before, but it has one extra defense, which is actually a bad thing in this case because you want your counterattacks to have lower defense. So it's actually not as good as Lizard Rider because of that. But uh, with that being said, it's still a useful counterattack if you're using a tiebreaker deck in the arena. Otherwise, you could use this, and this would be beneficial, better, more beneficial in your heroics um, as an unfused card. Um, and obviously it's a reference to Diddy Kong, who is the sidekick to Donkey Kong. So Donkey Kong Jr., Diddy Kong. Fun, fun stuff there. Um, next up we have Igor, or Igor! <laughs> 29 attack, 26 defense, curse card. Uh, I like Igor because cause the, uh, the young Dr. Frankenstein. Um, it's great, great. You should watch that movie, it's fun. Um, but because it has such a low attack, this I would just dust this card. And it's a reference to, to Igor, the sidekick to Dr. Frankenstein. Um, a doctor. It's a docker. Dr. Frankenstein. Um, but again, not, not a good card. Dust it. Next up, we have the Water Dragon. 29 attack, 27 defense, critical strike. Another not good card. I'd also dust this one. Now, at first I was having a head scratcher thinking... What the heck is this? It's it's. Uh, then I looked at the description of the card, and it says um, something like it's related to Magic Cod. So here's a picture of Magic Cod from the game, which is a reference to Magic Card from Pokemon. So obviously this has to be a Gyarados, right? Then you have to think, okay, well Gyarados, how is Gyarados a sidekick? This is the best I could do. So I'm sorry, guys. If you were to sidekick a Magic Cod you would make it into a water dragon because it would evolve. That's the, I know it's a stretch, guys. Sorry. That's the best I could give you. Uh, I know um, Team Rocket tried to steal a Gyarados, and then it got the red Gyarados in the uh, in the show and in one of the games. I can't remember which Game Boy game that was, but when you got to catch the red, dragon, or red Gyarados, that was fun. Your first shiny. But... Um, Regardless, this is not a good card. I'd, I'd dust it. But uh, if you guys have a better connection for the sidekick reference to Gyarados, let me know. And then finally, my personal favorite card from this pack is the Astro Droid. 30 attack, 23 defense. Um, you guys know I'm a big Star Wars fan. I already talked about Chewbacca earlier. But now we've got my personal favorite. I, don't, I go back and forth. Chewbacca and R2-D2 are my two favorites. So the fact that they're both in this is great. Um, he's an absorb card, so you could see use for him in the heroics. Uh, and obviously R2-D2 is the sidekick to Luke Skywalker. And in some ways, he's kind of best friends with C-3PO, if, if droids could be best friends. I don't think of him as a sidekick to C-3PO. I think C-3PO is a sidekick to R2, since R2 kicks everyone's butt, and C-3PO is just kind of scared. But, um, yeah, I could see use for him, like I said, in the uh, heroics, not, not in the arena, though. Um, because he's got that 30 attack, but only 23 defense, and it's an absorb card, so you can't use it in your arena. But that's the um, sidekick or wingman pack. 
Uh, both the Gold Combo card and Honest Combo card are highly lucrative. I definitely focus my time on both of them. The Kid Sidekick card could be useful in your Heroics and Arena. Most of these could be useful in your Heroics. Um, and then the, the uh, Barrel Gorilla Jr. Sorry, I had to look that up. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. Is useful if you have a tiebreaker deck. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to do it. If you have to choose, I think slightly better is the Sidekick pack or the Wingman pack um, over the Scaly pack. But both of these could be useful. Um, I'm going for the Wingman pack. I've already got Superhero, but I really want that Sidekick card. Uh, once I get at least two of those, I'm hoping I can still go back and double dip for the Sword Onyx combo card. But I don't think I'll have enough um, gems to go for both. So that's why I'm focusing on the sidekick one, because I'd rather have that new gold combo card than, um, than a card I've already got in my deck uh, with the Onyx combo card. But that's going to do it for me today. I'm sorry it's a little bit longer, but these are some really fun cards, so I wanted to give you some explanation. Uh, as always, we'd love for you guys to subscribe to our channel. The more subscribers we have, um, the better we look in the eyes of YouTube. So please subscribe, like this, give us a thumbs up. And then if you want to join the conversation with Mr. Andersam and I, make sure you go to our Discord. I'll put a link in the description. That's where we answer questions, give feedback, and just goof around a little bit. But uh, that being said, that's all the time I have for you guys today. I'm Tap Dog, and this is Little Alchemist Helper. Bye.